welcome to the Oracle Mobile Application Framework YouTube channel. This session is where we start to drill into what makes up a feature and I'll demonstrate how to develop a simple application consisting of some application features. You'll also get an insight into some of the building blocks that you'll be using day to day such as AMX pages, task flows and data controls. So let's first of all start by looking at the application functionality we're going to build today. The application will consist of a list of employees and by selecting the graph button we'll be able to view graph. We can move back, select an actual employee, see details about that employee and then send that employee an email using the device email functionality. So let's see how we can start building some of that functionality into a map application. Now before we jump into the IDE, let's take a quick tour around the principal building blocks of a feature. Now broadly speaking, the main building blocks you'll see will be an AMX page and task flows. So a feature can comprise of a single AMX page. And this is the principal user interface page you create with an Oracle Map application. A Map page would typically comprise of various out-of-the-box Map UI components bound to some sort of back-end data source or application function. So for example, an AMX page could contain a list of employees coming from enterprise database via a web service. It could have buttons that trigger functions on that list for example, adding a new employee detail, or it could include some more exotic math components like this geographic component for plotting the employee's location on a map. The second core building block of a math application feature is called a task flow. Now in its simplest form, a task flow is simply a flow of two or more AMX pages. So if a feature requires you to have a page with employee information but also allows navigation to a second page to view a graph of the salary over time, for example, then those two MX pages would be designed in a task flow and your feature content would be this task flow of two pages rather than a single MX page. So a task flow can be a flow of two pages or three pages, however many you want. Now, notice we say task flow rather than page flow, and this is because the flow isn't restricted to only pages. You can also have task flow that involves calling, uh, for example, a method as part of that flow. And after calling the method, you could call another page or even call another task flow. The idea behind task flows is they help developers partition and to modularize the feature development. We can then develop functional flows of pages in isolation from other parts of the page flow, yet be able to very simply bring them together and to reuse them throughout the application. Now, another building block you'll see in the demo is something you will learn about later in the series, but it's called the data control. When it comes to building a mobile application, the actual business logic that implements your business process could be implemented in any number of technologies. Now, you could be reading or writing data to the, the local SQLite database, or you could be accessing information from a REST or SOAP service, or you could be implementing business functionality using a local POJO. One thing that Oracle Math provides is the ability to have a layer of abstraction across all of those business services so you as the page developer aren't burdened with the finer details of this business implementation. Now this layer of abstraction is referred to as data controls. Now that means that when it comes to building the page to expose these functions it can be done in a very consistent manner and in many cases it can actually be done by simply dragging and dropping data or functions from the data control panel onto one of your AMX pages. And then hooking it up to a data component such as a, a list or a text view or an action component such as, as a button press. And this is all possible because the IDE knows how to deal with this consistent common data control interface. 
So here you can see the data control gives you a generic abstraction of how to send an SMS. And you can see that adding an employee is similarly abstracted in the exact same way. And if I wanted to trigger that business level function from a, a button press, I would simply drag and drop that data control onto the appropriate button. So now you've had a whistle stop tour of the basics, let's see all this in a very quick demo. So here we are inside JDeveloper and here's a project what we have created already. And let's first of all start by creating a feature. Feature is one of the core building blocks of a math application. It's a, it's a use case. So let's create one called employees. And the content for that employees feature, we could choose a single page or a task flow. But let's take a task flow because we'll have a number of pages involved in this particular feature use case. So let's give this task flow a name. Let's call it emp task flow and OK. Now within JDeveloper we can start defining the flow of this particular feature. So let's put or let's define our first page in the flow which will be called emplist and let's have a second page in the flow and this flow we'll call uh, show emp because we'll be showing employees on this and then our third page we want to show a graph so let's have a show graph page. So having defined the, the pages in the flow, let's connect those flows together and give the flows a name. So there are our three pages connected by two different flows. So the next step here is let's actually go ahead and start creating content on those pages. So let's create our emp list page. And here we go into the source view and the first thing we can do is let's change the header of this page to be something more meaningful. Let's call it employees. And let's change the name of one of our buttons here. On this button we can add a new text string which will be graph and pressing this button should show the graph. So we want to navigate the graph control flow. So here's a data control panel and this is a definition of a business service I created earlier with employees which has a number of attributes. Now let's drag and drop that data control onto the page as a list view. And we can choose what attributes from the employees data control are displayed. So let's choose name and email and we can divide the items in the list based on the, the name. Now we may well choose that selecting a particular employee in the list should navigate to the next page. So we can do that by selecting the list item within a list view and looking at the action property we can say selecting a list item should uh, execute the EMP navigation flow. So that will take us from this page to this page and pressing the graph button would take us here to this page. So let's create the graph page now. We only need one button, so let's deselect our secondary button. And again, we'll take our button here and this will navigate us back to the previous screen and the framework provides a default back navigation. Again, let's drag on employees data, but this time as a chart. And let's choose a bar chart. And in this bar chart, we can define our X and Y. So our X coordinates will be the employee name and the bar value will be the salary. So next step here will be defining our last page, which is the show employee page. And in this page, we may choose to have two buttons. So I've selected two buttons. And again, let's define the names or labels in some of these buttons. Pressing this button again will take us back. And the second button we'll create in a second, but let's first of all again show our employee information on this page, but this time we're going to display it as a form and we'll choose a read only form. Now if you look into a data control panel, you'll see there are device features and there's a device feature here called uh, send email. 
So let's send email. We can drag that on and JDeveloper says, how do you want that functionality hooked up? Well, let's hook up to a button and we have to define, well, what's the to field? Well, I can actually go in and define that the value that goes into the to field is the email value that's currently displayed on the screen. And for subject, let's just hard code a value. And we need to grant access that the device can access local email. And let's get rid of the button we had there previously. And that's it. So as a final step, we can just confirm that the device access, we have access to email. And if we also look at the application level configuration file, we can also see that for device access, we've defined that that feature can have access to email. So let's save and let's deploy that to Android and we'll deploy it directly to the device. So let's look at the emulator and start up our application. And when the application starts up, it shows us a list of employees and it's ordered or partitioned by the employee name. So first thing we'll do is let's select the graph button. The graph button will show us a graph of employee information. And there we can see. And let's go back to the previous page. And let's select uh, Bill and look at details for Bill. And again, go back. And this time, let's select Grant. So we select Grant on the list. And this time, we're going to send an email to Grant. So let's press the Send Email button. And this will allow us to send email using the device's email functionality. And there you can see the two fields already been populated. And let's add some content for this email. And there we've sent the email. And pressing the back button will take us back to the original list of employees. So in this episode, you've seen me get hands-on with building a basic feature and you've seen how to develop a very simple AMX page in a task flow. So thank you very much for watching and please look out for the next episode in this YouTube series.